Hello, let's take a look at your brain MRI. So it's my understanding that you had a recent fall and now you're having some headaches uh, and you had this MRI performed of your brain. So this is your study here on the left side of the screen. This is a model on the right side of the screen I'm gonna use to orient you to how we're looking. So radiologists normally look at the brain in what's called the axial view. Uh, this basically is a cross-sectional view that is uh, done from the feet up towards the head. Uh, so this is the right side, this is the front. So it's, it's as if when you're laying on your back like this, we're looking straight up through this way. So this is the right side, this is the front, just like here uh, on this MRI. So I have a normal brain MRI here for comparison, and we're gonna use this to go through your findings. So the first thing I wanna say is I'm gonna start with using what's called the flare sequence. Um, it's, it's really not important uh, what that necessarily is, but um, I'll just tell you that on this sequence, uh, the water around our brain or the cerebrospinal fluid is black, and uh, the parenchyma of the brain itself is this gray color here. And you can see that here on this normal uh, comparison, and, and we'll go through some some differences between your scan and the normal. So the first major thing that uh, you had was what's called a subdural hematoma. So you can see here along the side of the brain, there's this bright white color. Um, this is actually fluid and it's actually blood. Uh, so here on the normal one, we can go up here, you can see uh, these are the gyri and the, the sulci are these kind of crevices here. Um, you can see the black, it goes right up against the bone, which is this here, this is the skull. So then on yours, you can see the skull and you can see the brain, but then there's this white uh, area here. That's actually blood layering uh, beneath the dura. So the dura is the thick covering of the brain. It's kind of like a skin for the brain and uh, below that blood can collect and just sit there in between that skin or dura and the uh, brain itself. It's common after we hit our heads. Uh, there's a bunch of veins that are in that space and, uh, and they can rupture and cause this bleeding. You have another little tiny spot right here as well on the other side. So uh, that's the subdural hematoma component. Uh, the important thing to look out for for these is if this blood is big enough to where it pushes on the brain itself. And uh, we can see that here um, when we look, or a lot of times what we do is we look here in the midline to see if this here, this is called the septum pellucidum in between the ventricles, we see if that's shifted over, or the, these are the lateral ventricles. Um, if they're shifted over, that uh, is a worse prognosis than if they're um, in the midline. And so. Um, yours is in the midline. There's no shift or mass effect. Uh, we sometimes call it, you can see here, the same thing. The ventricles are in the midline here. So you may be telling yourself, my brain looks a lot different than this one. Um, so this is what happens when we age. So we get uh, atrophy of our brain. So the sulci or these kind of crevices um, become larger as the parenchyma of the brain gets smaller. So as we age, our uh, brain parenchyma will uh, decrease in size and when it does that uh, these ventricles here in the middle will also enlarge um, because of that so that's the differences that we're seeing here so you have some uh, brain atrophy uh, the second finding that you have is this this area here so if I go down here on this study um, this is the temporal lobe of the brain right here and uh, you can see you have the temporal lobe on this side it looks just like this one on this side, you have this black space here. Now you may remember I mentioned that uh, the black space was water or the cerebrospinal fluid, and uh, that's essentially what this is. It's, it's what we call an arachnoid cyst, which is basically a collection of that fluid. Um, you were born with it. It's something that some people uh, have in different places in their brain, and it usually uh, doesn't cause much of a problem, very rarely. Um, it can cause pressure. You can see it's kind of indenting this temporal lobe here, but it's it's been there your whole life and probably didn't cause any issues. It does cause this area here to be a little bit bigger as compared to this side. Um, so just some of the spaces where the fluid is, is just a little bit bigger. Um, I can show that on a different sequence too. This, this makes the water or the fluid in white. So you can just see that here. 
um, and that just kind of confirms that it's uh, this cerebrospinal fluid. You can see there's uh, just the normal temporal lobe here in the normal example. Um, so another thing uh, that you have is, let me get a different sequence. We'll go back to the flare. So in the temporal bone here, so this bone is in black here. So if we go down here, uh, this is actually the temporal bone. So this is the ear. Uh, and then again, like this is the ear. So uh, this is just part of the temporal bone, which is part of the skull on the side of our face. There's a portion of it called the petrous portion of the bone, which is right here. And it's right here in the normal. You can see you have this bright, this bright round thing here. Um, and that is, uh, you know, showing up bright like um, this fluid does. So you may say, oh, is it blood? Um, sort of. It's not blood exactly. Um, so the f on the flare sequence, other things can be bright as well. Um, I can show you uh, a different uh, sequence here too. This is uh, what we call a T1 sequence. So the fluid is also dark on this one. Um, and we'll go to find this same area here. It's not very well seen on this actually. So let me do this T2 again. So you can see it's bright on this T2 also. Um, so what that tells us is that it's some sort of cystic thing. Um, now I won't get into the details of, of how a radiologist really distinguishes between different things, um, but I'll just tell you that we use these different characteristics based on these different sequences to make a diagnosis of what these things are. This is most likely what we call a cholesterol granuloma. Um, which is basically kind of like a uh, cyst um, that's been there a really long time. It's benign. It doesn't cause any problems. And it's got kind of a, a mixture of fat and blood in it. Um, it's, it's really of no clinical consequence, but some people have them. And uh, that was mentioned on your scan. Um, so those are your major findings. Uh, so in summary, you have this subdural hematoma. You have this arachnoid cyst here uh, in the what we call the middle cranial fossa or adjacent to this temporal lobe. You have this cholesterol granuloma. Uh, and then you have um, some atrophy of your brain, which causes enlargement of these uh, ventricles and these uh, spaces around the brain. Um, so those are the, the major findings uh, of your study.